Welcome to the JBL Podcast. And today we're with a return guest. That's a, me. That's the <laughs> best one with the most views, Adrian Clark. How are you, buddy? I'm good, man. I'm good. Yeah, Glad, yeah. Good to be back. Good to be back. Good to have you back. Yeah. Um, it's good to have you know somebody who does all the work where I get you to talk and I just <laughs> sit and listen. How you been? I've been lovely. Um, as you can see, the beard is growing. So, you know, it's, it's a nice winter so far. You might get a beard bob from somebody. I don't know. We'll, we'll see about that. Hey, you know, whatever is whatever. I'm good for anything. We're drinking this tea. We're at his place this time because I told him last time he took the train and all this. He got a big bag. I mean, I know he has a car and all that, but I don't know why he did that. All that works. So I felt bad. Not only did I feel bad, I want to come check all his crazy stuff out. And I haven't been here in a while. I know the heated pool's not ready yet. No, but no, no. I still want to come by. <laughs> it's, shut, it's shut down, but definitely got to come by again, and then we'll probably hop, hop in a hot tub next time. Oh, actually. man, man, that too. And, you know, yeah. like, uh, we were just talking, you know, I'll come by a little bit more often. I didn't know it was that close once I came here, because last time, my memory was a little, it was a little further away. Yeah. Uh, when, was our, when was our podcast? November. Beginning of November. Top of November. Oh, so it's been about a little bit more than a month, right? Yeah, a month yeah. and a half. Yeah. yeah, about a month and a half, so... I think it was due time for another one. Yes, actually, it's a little early to be honest. We got to give other people <laughs> more uh, chance. But um, a lot of people are waiting on the list just because the COVID situation. Yeah. Uh, they're a little backed up. So uh, especially with Adrian, like as people who watch my uh, podcast know, his stuff is more a little bit more rare. Uh, it's not your usual everyday, you know, create Tom Ford's and you know Armani Versace, which which he has too, and which you know there, there's nothing wrong with it. But he just tends to lean to things that we've, I've never heard of and much more niche and much more rare. And so I've been, a lot of been, people have been talking to me, asking about Adrian and they even always joke like, well, I'm not no Adrian Clark, but blah, blah, blah. And people sometimes say too, like, you know, I'm no Brandon Luck, but you know, like if you see the other people too, you don't have to be a giant monster like this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. all levels. And the other thing, as you see, the host is on the very bottom level and don't know shit. So. There's no, there's no pressure. There's no, there's no. You don't have to be a certain level. It just come on, shoot the shit, and have fun. Yeah, man. That that that's honestly what it is. Um, like you say, touching on that, I do love my different things. Um, not everything I have is super crazy, super can't find or rare, but I do love the more artistic stuff. Even if it's, even if it's um, fragrances within like designer or that's slightly like in the niche realm that's different i'm okay with that you know sure. you know um i just like art and, and th this is what it is i think this is what everybody seems to forget right um a lot of a lot of people are just getting fragrances and yes it smells good and that's you but seem to forget that there's an art behind this whole thing right the perfumers are sitting down taking the time months to create this because it is art it's like their baby it it's is it their, is right? it's child. So, like, it's i think child. we seem to get caught up in everything else and what's the next thing, what smells good, but we seem to forget, hey, you know what? We have this in front of us. This is art, let's appreciate it, right? So that's just me. I just love to, I guess I'm, I guess I'm a fragrance art collector. <laughs> that's No, that's well put. Um, a lot of people go with the trend and they forget, you know, about the art. A lot of people still uh, like the art and know it's art, but they still get influenced to the trend where I think you know it's art, but you, you rarely get I don't know if you, if you don't get influenced, but you just have your answers. I said this with Asquith too. Mm. Me too. Sometimes I get influenced. I like what's popular and I, I get to get influenced and look into what's popular. But it's almost like you are Leela. I'm sure this is not what you did, but like it's almost like you're staying away from the trend and away from what's popular. But I know that's not what you're doing. Mm. What you're doing is just picking what you like independently. But at the end of the day, what you pick turns out to be a little on the left field or it's, exactly. it's not your usual everyday and to touch on your thing he's not a guy who's like oh only niche sorry i said niche before yeah even uh designers but usually there are like they're not the known known, it's not a known yeah, yeah, yeah. Designers, like, they're even like flankers or yeah. like you know like crypto mint isn't like an unknown thing but like it's not your main like you know everybody I, I, everybody like i said before yeah. everybody 
between those two, everybody's always talking about um, Ultra Zest. Ultra Zest. Always. Or, it's you know, sold out. It's going for like $300. Uh, yeah, yeah. But nobody talks about Crypto Mint. Yeah. Which Crypto Mint personally is the better of the two. It's just great to personally to that's me. That's your no, to me. You know, I love it too, but I'm just saying, right? I didn't know of it before I met you, right? Yeah. But I knew about the whole line and the Alien Man, the B Man, and all that. Uh, the one with the blue one? The, um... the, the original A Man. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah that one. And. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, no, no. I'm just saying, I like how your things are all left field. Like, yeah. you know, when I meet people, it's usually you have this. Oh, I got that too. Oh, I like that. And there's, we have like 10% of stuff that I'm like, oh, I'm sure you haven't seen this <laughs> yeah. and our, our special uh, weapon or whatnot. But more than 50% of his stuff is just, even you're showing me that, what's that flower thing you had with the three boxes, the back of oh, the, the um, it's Balenciaga Flor Botanica. It's one of my favorite. Uh, rose scents, floral scents, ever. Do you guys know what and this is? Do you I guys literally know? have a 100 mil bottle and then three back of 50 mil bottles because it's discontinued. So I'm good forever. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a gorgeous presentation. Um, people that know about it know about it. Few, few, I think a good amount of people in the group probably know about it, but they're not as thrilled, I guess, maybe if you want to say, as I am. There's a few of us that love it mm -hmm. it's just the bottle's different the yeah. colors and the rings around it yeah. uh it's not as crazy as the oh my gosh i should know the name the one we did on our podcast with the mirror and the um, the uh, the one we opened oh, oh the, no strange or yeah, yeah yeah stranger, yeah stranger stranger yeah yeah stranger. it wasn't that crazy but it uh, kind of reminded me in the sense of the colors and it was just different with yeah, the especially presentation for a design, especially for a designer bottle too and it, yeah. it's a designer yeah Balencia, yeah man <laughs> i mean I knew it was a designer, I just yeah. uh, I was thinking of something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're thinking about the other one that I showed you. You said Miyaki one, I think. This is some good sake, man. It's strong. Listen, I wish I had some sake right now. Honestly, my, my cabinet is looking dry, man. I need, I need to fill that shit up. <laughs> I need some more. So really quick today, uh, I came over to see uh, Adrian uh, for a few reasons. We just haven't seen him in a while, wanted to hang out. Um, a lot of the people who come on my podcast were either good friends or Facebook friends through the like in real life friends. Um, so, and then uh, I just said uh, I need to drop him off his you know Christmas presents, and I told him on revenge I'm gonna get him back for the box he got me. And I was like, man, I'm gonna come to see you anyways. Let's put in a few. Uh, uh, let's put in a quick podcast. Let's talk about the few of the ones that you haven't talked about last time that was on your list and. Uh, Almost every time I come here, I think we're going to do something. So a lot of people you might see once or twice a year. This guy you might see 10, 20 times a year. So <laughs> get used to it. Yeah, if you guys didn't know, I, I um, bought stock. I'm now the... Um, the <laughs> He's the CEO of Private right Low. <laughs> He's a part owner. Part, part owner ownership. Of the JVL. Yeah. He's got 25%. I got 25%. Jeffrey's got 25%. <laughs> exactly. And J-Dog got 25%. We're good. But I think J-Dog already fucking spent it all on uh, Hennessy already. He knows what's up. All right, uh, let's slowly get into this. Um, the first one, of course, that I don't know. So the first one is uh, Bardu. Um, it's called uh, Oudwa Vanilla. So it's this one here. Mm. Uh, so this one, um, it has. Well, you know, you know what? Let me start off. Bardu. It, it, it's it's been around for quite a long time. Where's the house from? Um, France. France. Okay. So, so, so it's a friend. It's a French house. Um, they've been around for quite a long time. Um, since uh, what, nineteen or eighteen hundreds, they've been around. Sorry, nineteen hundreds. Okay. Nineteen hundreds. Um, they've been around. Um, it all started off with uh, Guillermo uh, Bardou. Um, so it started off with him, uh, and from there, it went down. Um, within the family. So it's four generations of the family. Okay. So it started off with him. He was a barber and a hairdresser. Oh, that's interesting. So then 1902, it started, right? Um, so he first created the Amber Eau de Cologne okay. uh, for the aftershaves and when he's done cutting, splash on. It was, this, a, it was a splash. Bar. Is his house like barbershop scent or everything? No, oh, it, okay. it, it, everything. that's where it kind of originally has its roots from. Began from. Uh, began from in 1900s. Um, that's where it began. After shave. Exactly. And... So their bottles were like a splash bottles back then. Uh, from there, it went to um, Henry, which is his son. So he took it over in 1936. Okay. Uh, he became the perfumer. For... Are you sure it was 1936? Because I thought it was 1936. Uh, so it started off, so it went to him, Henry. And he became the perfumer uh, for that, okay. for the house. 
that is when he created uh, Violette de Toulouse. Um, so that's another uh, perfume that he created for the house. Okay. That perfume blew up. The, um, it was violets, so as the name suggests. So they were very well known for their violets, okay. especially back then. And from there, it went to uh, Pierre in 1970, which he brought back the heritage of where the house started from and did out of Cologne line, which oh, is okay. a 1902 line. So in Bordeaux, they have definitely they have different lines, 1902s. They have the Oud line, which is Oud uh, Millicime, which okay. is this line. And then they have the Grand Cruz, which is the other lines. So he brought back the 1902s. And fast forward to 2015, um, Sophie, which is the fourth generation now, she's overseeing the whole the whole house. Okay. Uh, so and like you said, they're all in the it's, family. It's, it's all the family. family. So okay, four okay. generations, been around for 170 like years or whatever it is now. Um, so they've been around for quite a long time, and now she is the one that's more taken to a creative standpoint uh, with the with the with the house. So the oud uh, house, which is the uh, Millicene line. Okay. So these lines are supposed to be interpretation of uh, different parts of the world where they imagine, right? Nice, um, nice. So have they have an Oud line, they have a Grand Cruise line, which is a cruise line, <laughs> summer line. So they have- Th Thanks for clarifying that. <laughs> right? Um, so they have like things from India, from Brazil, from different places across the world, and they take their scents or their notes or accords, whatever that's you want to call it, materials. Really nice. Yeah, yeah. Right? Um, and blend it in within their perfume. So. Really cool house. Um, definitely this one here. Um, it has a great sense of oud, wood, uh, oud wood. Let's vanilla. give it a try while you're talking about yeah. it. Yeah. So pop that bad boy off. Just don't get too close to the tea. Oh man, it's, it's gonna taste and smell good. What do you okay. mean? <laughs> get some alcohol in the tea too, right? That's how you yeah. get shit taste quick. <laughs> yeah, so this Woo! one. Yeah, it is. So these guys only have four notes, eh? This guy, this one guy? It says, yeah, it says it only has okay. oud, vanilla, amber, and jasmine. Um, those are the four notes that it has. Um, and it definitely shows, it definitely shows for sure. Madagascar vanilla, right? Correct, uh, Madagascar vanilla. So it definitely shows, uh, it does have like a, the oud is there. Oh yeah, it just, just, it just says oud. It like, has yeah, a yeah. spiciness, but a warm sweetness to it also too. Oh, yeah. And a little animalic. And I think that's where the jasmine and the, and the um, oud combine gives off that vibe, that little animalic vibe. But it has a, a spiciness behind there too. Yeah, Just it's, a it's little weird. bit of spiciness. I'm sure there's more than those four notes. I'm sure there is. I think there, that's I'm the sure only one is. listed that I found, but yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure there is, um, but for their purposes, they probably just put that because yeah. this line is the oud line. So they kind of want to probably put those to the forefront. I'm only saying this because I get a little bit of spiciness, you're saying? Yeah. And from these notes, there's nothing that would allude to that, right? It, it, like I said, I said it, it could, things, it could either a be more, yeah. a little, a few more things inside of it. That's more subtle. That's yeah, not the main. Yeah, like I feel that there's probably some cardamom or something that's spiciness or some saffron or something that's there, this hint of it. Um, but if it's not, and these are the four notes, I think it's the oud mixed with the uh, jasmine that's giving that like animalic vibe and slightly spiciness from the amber. The sweetness there, right? I like it. Yeah. So by the way, these are fragrances that I love to wear for winter. By the way. Um, so I don't know what. Add, add one thing: the 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 patterns on the back. Yes. Yeah, it's something else too for me. Yeah. Again, so going to the presentation and whatnot. Like the small attention details. Sorry, go ahead. Exactly. No, exactly what you said. Uh, they're well known for their detail. All their bottles are very fun. Um, the other bottles are like this, except for the 1902 line. 1902 line is kind of very more standard. Your straight up cylinder bottle, 1902 on the front, and the name of what the thing is, vetiver or nice, whatever nice. it is, right? But as for when you start getting to these lines and the, the Grand Cruise line, their bottles are very unique. And we're going to next number one? two. Number two. Number two. Oh, that's an interesting uh, presentation, right? It is. It, it kind of looks like a. A sci-fi movie future, like it's a it's a mini robot. Like, uh, what can I do for you yeah. today? <laughs> yeah, just spin it around. Uh, uh, play play some uh, hip hop music. <laughs> Mob Deep. Q. Mob Deep. Right Q. Now. Yeah, yeah. Nineties, <laughs> nineties hip hop. Yeah, th this is Derek Lamb. In, like I said, interest in packaging, uh, for sure. It has that dumbbell kind of vibe going on with it, and more of a stretched out Perry Ellis 
<laughs> oh yeah, 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 the silver, yeah, 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 yeah. The, the 360 yeah, bottles yeah, yeah. and whatnot. With so, the red thing on the top, yeah. Yeah, so it has that kind of vibe, um, futuristic, like you said. Where is the house from again? Um, so Derek Lamb is an American house. Um, so this is a designer fragrance. Um, he is a designer company to begin with. This line, uh, the 10 Crosby line, it got released in 2015. So it's a fairly new line that got released. Oh, it's a, so it's a line? Yeah. Okay, so what's the name of the fragrance, this one? Uh, this one is called Something Wild. Oh, and, and the name is not on the bottle? No, it's on the bottom of this, where the stickers. Okay. Okay, so, yeah. but it's, it's... It's not okay. showcased on a bottle. It's okay. just, because each... That's kind of unique, no? It is. Yeah, and yeah. You'll, you'll know, the reason why you'll know is, I'm going to show the camera can pick this up, but it is purple. The liquid is purple. Okay, so everything has a different color. Every, every bottle has a different color. So that's how you... You got to know the house to be able to know which is which bottle. Because exactly. it doesn't actually say the name of the fragrance on it. Yeah. Go it ahead. Just, just has different color. I don't think it's going to pick up the color. It, it probably, probably come out pick black. It, up. But um, it does look like yeah. a dark oh, black. Oh, yeah. But it's a vi really deep mm. violet color. Like, a, yeah, yeah. Uh, I wouldn't say purple, but yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. exactly. So with... Um, they are a designer company. Um, Derek Lamb. He's been around for quite a while. Uh, in the 90s, he did um, some uh, assistant uh, assistant for Michael Kors. Okay. Started off with Michael Kors, did his little assistant thing there, moved away to Hong Kong, came back to New York. Then he was um, appointed the uh, creative director of Michael Kors design in the, in, the, in the 90s. Early 2000, that's when he started his own line called Derek Lam. Is he Asian? He's, yeah, Chinese American. Oh. I, so he's okay. Chinese American um, by descent, and he started his own line in 2000, the Derek Lamb line, which is clothing more for females. And fast forward um, about 10, 12 years later, he created the 10 Crosby line, which is a fragrances. He also has um, this, he also has clothing the same line, okay. 10 Crosby line, but for clothing. So they came out simultaneously at the exact same time. Now the difference between his line and 10 Crosby is 10 Crosby is supposed to be more of like a downtown Manhattan feel. Okay. So it reflects within the clothing, it reflects right into the fragrances, right? So yeah, it's, pre it's pretty cool. cool. Um, and what's neat about this whole line is that each bottle, there's 10 in the, in the lineup, each bottle and each scent is supposed to tell a story. Now it's supposed to tell a story from his vision of him looking outside of his, his, um, his, office, his office in Manhattan through his window. On, uh, in New York. So the whole story behind it is him, him, him sitting there, just imagine Derek Lamb chilling and just watching craziness going on all over Manhattan. And he creates a story between. And getting inspiration yeah, from what he for, sees for out the window. So it's and like, it's New York, so you it's know. New York, so there's the, all kinds the of shit business, going on. The business, the streetness of it, the, oh, the, the, there's so many stories after stories and things just happening in New exactly. York. Exactly, yeah. and that's what I find really interesting about this line. And it does, it does translate to the fragrances. Um, it's so, different. It's even the presentation. Before you uh, open or spray it for me, yeah. I'm gonna make a embarrass myself a little bit more, like I always do. Let me see if I know how to. Okay. <laughs> 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 and I didn't try before. You can. I, I didn't try yeah, before. You didn't. And you didn't always magnet. <laughs> but you know, there would be a good chance. I'm just like. Yeah. <laughs> Not a flack and all. <laughs> how to open a flack and all. Okay. Yeah. Let's spray this one. All right. So let's spray this bad boy. Do it off here. I spray it, but I'll let the professional do it. I'm with the professional. All right. Oh, my favorite color. There he goes. I mean, other than pink, it's yeah. my favorite. Almost, was it you when we were talking about the Spice Girl? Yeah, it yeah, was. Yeah, Spice Girl, yeah, yeah. Asshole, get out oh, of here. Oh, man. Kay was dying when she watched that. <laughs> that was dying, too, because I was like, why can't I remember the names of the songs? And like, while I'm watching, I'm like, oh, my God. And I swear someone one, commented on the, in the video what, the, what it was, dude. <laughs> Yeah, so this this one um, does have um, vanilla, cedar wood. Um, it does have that woody notes um, to it. So this one and this one, they both have a um, Madagascar vanilla. Yes, yes. So as you realize when the fragrances you, that you're going to be seeing throughout this episode, it's a lot of oriental fragrances. You said uh, you already said winter, winter, colder weather. Yeah, winter, um, colder weather, but all of them are oriental except for leave one no three of them is not oriental okay i i'm not sure of this to be 100 okay. honest i like this one better i think it's more pleasing yep um 
I might say I like the vanilla in here better. Mm -hmm. I just, there's more things going on with this one. This is just a little... <sighs> the Birdo is definitely more, it's more elegant. It's definitely more elegant and that just it's shows more you... simple. This one is more exactly. simple. Exactly, it's straight to the straight to the point. It's simple, but you know there's something going on with it. Yeah, there's still something going on. It's just, yeah, I don't, I'm not shitting on it. I'm just, you know, no. first, this is this is my first impression. I've never smelled any of these. The other ones coming out later I have, but uh, yeah. And, As a and first impression, it's... Uh, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. It doesn't yeah. grab me. This more is more intriguing. It's got yeah. more things going on. It's uh, it makes me wonder what is this? Why is there spiciness in here? This is a nice designer. It's nice. It's yeah. nicer as in it's it's pleasing. Yeah. This just intrigues me more, and it's it's more complicated and uh, yeah. So yeah, fair enough. And like I said, everybody's not supposed to. Everybody can't like the exact same thing, right? So it's good. We on this channel, we're not. He's not bullshitting. When I come on, I'm not gonna bullshit. If I like something, I like something. If I don't, I tell you it's okay. Or if I love it, I'm gonna tell you. Right? There's no bullshit here. Um, and I'm glad. Like you don't have to say you love it just because. You, you know, at the end of the day, what I'm actually saying is I like the smell of this. But it's better. Not, it's but not, I like that this makes. Catchy. Yeah, this this makes me question. Like I know what what's here. I, I know the freshness, and I like what's in here. I know what I'm what I'm dealing with here. I actually don't know. I'm like, wh where is the spiciness coming from? Mm. The woody is a little woody, but it's actually not soapy, but powdery too. And it's yeah. like, how does that work? How, that, that I'm supposed to, like, you know yeah. what I mean? Where I have some questions with this, like, what's going on? Where this is like, I know what's going on. And, and de definitely, I know what you mean. And but if, I know what you mean. Off, off, especially off the strip. Yeah. On, on skin, this one is a slightly different. It's, just, it's still the same scent, but when it's on skin, from this, it says vanilla and cedarwood. On skin, it is, I get so much different things going on with this that I actually question this a lot to know what the hell is actually in this because it's not only two notes. On skin, I definitely get a lot more spiciness. Like I feel like there's there's some spice that's there, some really oriental spiciness that's there, some um, lactonic kind of notes, kind of milky, and um, it has almost like a burn kind of feel to it. Not, not like birch tar, but kind of going towards that vibe where it has almost like a, a cabin wood kind of feel, but very earthy. On skin, this is what I get from it. Out, out of everything you said, I know this is not on skin, but I, I, I now since you pointed out, I really get the milky tone. Yeah, I really get the milk. There's milky. a lot going on with this with this fragrance, especially on skin. So if anybody ever wants to try out this line, I know it's kind of getting a little bit harder to find now because they are discontinued, but um. It's it's a lot more going on skin for this line. I'm interested in the dry down. Yeah, I'm really because I think with this I can kind of predict the dry down, which is already in there. Exactly. I kind of have a feeling this will be something else because it's kind of kind of like I said, it's simple one dimensional. So the the dry down will be something totally or not totally, but I think it's going to be a little bit different. Yeah. Like sometimes the the Amen ones or whatnot, but um, oh, that, oh, those change <laughs> drastically. Yeah, yeah. You, you, on, you right? see what I'm saying, right? Yeah. This one I think it's like. It's this is what we have, and just a couple of notes are here gonna disappear, and this is where we're and gonna, gonna left, yeah, like just left, left with. Where this is, it might be something different. Yeah. So, well, we'll check it out after. Definitely, we'll I'll touch I'll on that. Love that, love that. Oh, next one is the one that I know, and I have, and I own. Oh my gosh, something that I'm familiar with. He has it, and he knows it. The big bad boy, Gucci Guilty Absolute. Since this is the only one I know about, I'll add some things and you can take a quick break. Yeah, good. Uh, let's start with a shout out to Matt Beatty who uh, sent me a decant or gave me a decant. Uh, I didn't buy it from him. We didn't exchange anything. He just gave it to me and that's how it is. Um, it's so warm. Um, you can go outside in winter temperature in your shorts and t-shirt and just uh, <laughs> <not> case, yeah. <laughs> a couple, couple of sprays of this and you know you don't even need a jacket this will warm you up it's just so uh, so woody so leathery um i mean there's other notes in there like uh what do you got cypress. here cypress cypress patchouli yeah uh the vetiver vetiver yeah but man in the gist of it all it's a it's a wood and leather and there's all these Come other on. components around it exactly yeah, it, it's, a, it's a beast of a scent um it, it definitely projects. It leaves a long-lasting um, trail too, and on skin, it, 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 it does. It does last a long time on oh, yeah, skin, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and it projects. projects it projects. Projects, projects, and projects. honestly, all of these last a long time on skin. On me, I'm getting easily for majority of these easily eight to ten hours. Some of them a little bit more. Um, as you go, as I go on, I'll tell you which ones. Um, this one's like again, probably around the eight hour, ten hour I get on this, and same with the other two. Um, the 
Bardu does stay a little bit closer to skin though, however, does stay a little bit closer to skin, more elegant kind of scent. This one is just, it's a masculine scent. I don't see too many females wearing it, I'm not saying that they can't, but I don't see too many females wearing it. Um, it can be a little bit scary. It can be hard to pull off. <laughs> yeah, it can be a little bit scary of a scent. Uh, they could probably layer it with something. Definitely, Definitely. probably yeah. layer with something like um, a little bit more sweeter, yeah. maybe more some more vanilla. But it has a little wood in it to complement the wood and the mix it in. Exactly. Or later. When I first smelled this back in 2017, uh, when we were at an airport uh, in Miami, at the uh, duty free end, absolutely freaking loved it. Fell in love with it at that moment. I said, what the hell is this? Kay was saying, what the hell is this? <laughs> so like it was two different, what the hell? Oh, <laughs> by the way, I don't know if you know this, but you actually can't get this in uh, Canada. You can only no, get it from <laughs> You can't. You know what? That. Thank you for telling me that. You can't get it. Guys, this is not available in Canada. So, okay, okay we did a take before this and we were talking about Gucci and it didn't get recorded. So he's the one who mentioned that you can't get it in Canada and I just learned it. And now I'm like flipping like I knew the whole time. You guys know, you know how I He knows it. He knows his shit though. He does his research. Trust me, he does. <laughs> okay, let's go. Um, and you know, we kind of jumped the gun. Let's uh, touch on Gucci, just the house itself a little bit. Yeah. So with the house itself, um, they've been around for quite a long, long time. Italian house. Obviously. As everybody knows. Um, designer um, company. Um, the song Gucci Gucci Prada. Uh, Fendi Ta Fendi Prada. Was it Tayshon or whatever her name yeah. was? Yeah. Um, so What's all the girl's name? Oh, Frank, I can't remember. The one that actually, in the other one that yeah, 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 yeah. I can't remember her name, but those are the, those are the drunk dates. <laughs> the drunk freaking early two, the late 2000s. That's the, that's the California underground scene. Though. Yeah, yeah, like uh, with um, what's the one other guy? Ah, it's gonna kill me. Let's go on. This is not a rap uh, yeah. podcast, but uh, but yeah, with Gucci Italian House, they're well known for their their um, well known for their quality and so forth. They have a lot. Guilty Line itself. I don't know how many flankers it has now. I got honestly lost track. Uh, personally, I do love this one. There's an oud one, and there's a new one that just came out. Even this year. even the guilty, there's quite a few, right? The non absolute. Yeah, there's a bunch. So this is still part of the guilty uh, line, but there's a ton of flankers. I checked the one I have is the same exact one as your as this guilty one. absolute. Yeah. Uh, I just noticed. These things I actually don't pick up that much, like what's different on your skin, but for the first time I'm really noticing, because when I try this, my decant, I always, uh, it's on my skin. And I'm actually picking up that it's a little bit different on, on this end on my skin. And I, honestly, I don't usually pick that up. So what, what does it come off on, on, like on skin? Do you, do you like, remember, recall what it smells like on skin for you? It's, I think it's a little more sweeter now. Like the vetiver and some of the other stuff is coming out more. Okay. And on my skin, it's just a dark, woody, uh, leathery, and it just. I, it's kind of hard to explain, but I, I, I don't. Like a petrol, kind of like gasoline. Yeah, kind of but it, it's it's all. It's all more infused in one word. This one, I'm getting the supporting notes, like the vetiver, patchouli, a little bit more. Okay. And uh, yeah, I always like this a little bit gasoline vibe in it. Yes. It's not as, uh, it's not like Fahrenheit, no. where it's a little bit more in your face. I like Fahrenheit too. I didn't when I first tried it, but now I'm maturing and I'm getting to like it. But I think this is more safer, not gasoline note, but gasoline vibe. <laughs> yeah, vibe, yeah. yeah. It's, a safe, it's a safer fire starter, guys. <laughs> But yeah, I know, I know what you mean. It's, it's not as bold, but the Fahrenheit is just like, it's pounding you in the face. Oh yeah. And one spray, maybe even half a spray of Fahrenheit, especially the OG and you're okay. This one is a little bit more tamed and it's your guy, right? It's, yeah. it's your guy that makes it, right? Your perfumer. Oh, love, so, right? so this, this guy, uh, this the note behind this is uh, Alberto Morillas. And uh, I'll guarantee I mispronounced that, so don't even uh, start. Uh, so. Uh, when I did a Jay and J Dog, uh, Jeffrey and J Dog episode, uh, I did one on Dylan Blue, and uh, I got to know that the um, no, uh, the nose, the perfumer was Alberto, and uh, we're talking before when we're talking movies. You know, it's nice to know the movies and the actors and whatnot, but if you want to go a little bit deeper, it's not nice to see the directors, what movies they have made in the past, and what kind of footprint they leave, what yeah. kind of style they have, and we're saying the same thing with perfumers. Once you know that this person did this and that, and you kind of see like, ah, that's Arberto, that's that, and whatnot. And especially with this guy, uh, Mr. Morales, as I uh, noticed, not only is his resume extensive, uh, a lot of the things are like really famous and heavy hitters and 
ones I'm actually familiar with. Uh, let's start with the um, George Armani Acca di Gio. Yeah. All of them. Like all the, the, the original, awesome. the Profumo, uh, the Senza, the Absolute, the, Profo the Profondo. All done by this guy. All done by this yeah, guy. And, and Acca di Gio is the most sold fragrance number one, ever. Number one ever. Fragrance ever. <laughs> so yeah, it's he's been around. Good luck. On top of that, CK1. Another monster of the 90s. Uh, I already mentioned Versace for Home, Dylan Blue, both like designer, popular, popular. Get one more Dolce and Gabbana, light blue and pants. Love it. Salty gorgeousness. Ready for this one? <laughs> Go ahead. Tommy Hilfiger Tommy. You know. The original, the back in the uh, day. Tommy, the you know? That was one of the first ones I had as yeah. uh, back in the and even like a uh, tragedy of uh, George uh, Lord George. So yeah. guys, I mean that's like not even a quarter of like that's, oh, that's one of the main main ones that I noticed. There's uh there's much more in there if, than it. If you were to probably name off the stuff, it cost me probably about three pages. Oh yeah, no no, this is uh for granted because yeah. it just scrolled down and down and down. But it's kind of cool that you know like to like I remember um you do that a lot too. But uh Brandon Luck on the show, he just he just went on about the uh, perfumers and not only did he mention perfumers, and he's like, oh well this perfumer has this and this and you see how this vibe connects yeah. to this vibe. It's like. It's very interesting. I don't know that much yet, but it'd be nice. Like, like, like my movie knowledge, know the directors as well as the perfumers and the house and whatnot, and that'll be another element that I would like to add or yeah. add to my uh, arsenal. Yeah, you, you get to you get to um, go through your collection and finally realizing, hey, I actually have 10, 20 of these fragrances by, by so the same so. person who made it. So yeah. like, you, you're drawn to that, right? You're naturally drawn to that without even knowing, right? So it's a really cool journey for everybody to take that next step and do that and figure out the perfumers or you know, the notes that they like to use a lot, right? They're, you can they're tell. Footprint. They're footprint, they're style, right? they're... Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, and like you're saying, it's it's an art. And it's like, it's, it's their child. It's like, you know, to us it's just like, oh, whatever, but... To every perfume, it's somebody's heart and soul, and it's it's it's, it's their ego, and it's it's a representation of them and who they are, and it's yeah, it's a, an extension of them, reflection of them, right? Same with us, exactly. perfume for us. Well, why we buy it should be an extension of. We didn't even make it. We just bought nothing. somebody, yeah. was, and then we're still like, this represents me. Yeah, this is exactly. Me right? but, I wear it. but it's really represent uh, them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but can you imagine if you actually made it? Then it's really like this is me, like kind yeah. Of it's 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 an amazing thing. It's an amazing thing. I love it. So the next one, I'm not too familiar with, but I actually like it. I kind of don't like it because of the reason that it smells very similar to another musk uh, fragrance that I really like and I talk about a lot. But other than that, a small weird reason, I love it. So it is Kiehl's Original Musk. Look at the dent in, oh, not dude. even dent, you don't even have... Dude, I need, uh, I'm telling you, this is one of my favorite musk scents, like... Okay, back up uh, the house, Kiehl's? Kiehl's. Um, so, 1851, sorry, go yeah. ahead. So, they've been around for a while, they are a cosmetic beauty um, company. Oh yeah? Yeah, so this, oh. a lot of the skin care. I know, hair. I know, yeah, skin care. Yeah, you've seen them in the day. Everywhere. I got you. They're right. everywhere. Oh, they're the same. I didn't. I wouldn't think they were this. Okay. Yeah, because they don't really showcase their fragrances. They they had a few more in their lineup. However, in stores, this I believe it's only this one. It, the only one you can get in stores now. Okay. I believe. Where? Um, in the Kiehl's stores. Oh, this Kiehl's. Okay. Yeah, so like they have them on a lot. Pretty much every mall I think has a Kiehl's now at this point. Um, and they're in some department stores, like in the Hudson Bay and so forth too. But they have their standalone stores also. If you're kind of new to this podcast, or if you haven't seen his uh, previous podcast, he's working a lot of department stores. Uh, he has his own. It'll be in the description. He has his own uh, fashion styling and the fashion and styling, and he's uh, is much more. Uh, his fashion sense is much more uh, enlightened, heightened, and your normal average uh, nobody losers <laughs> but no no he actually he knows he has credential behind what he's talking about I know most of the people who watch the podcast know just in case I get some new viewers it's not just some nobody just talking shit out of their ass <laughs> he, he works all in those department stores and he knows what he's talking about go yeah. ahead yeah so with Kiehl's they uh they do like I said they do the, co the cosmetic care and so forth mm -hmm. only way you can get um, right now American? it is an American yeah okay. um, American company and the musk, this musk, is musk. <laughs> it is definitely, you know, you get some brands or some some scents where they're like, oh yeah, this is 
musk extreme or whatever and it's just like oh here's a little bit of musk we don't want to scare you off this is this is bold guys this is bold um it is one of my favorite musk scents very white florals neroli patchouli patchouli um musk obviously so there's a lot going on with this one orange blossom bergamot yep uh, yang yang yeah um so that one does that note kind of gives off the sweet i get the rose kind of melic notes uh, i get the rose i get the neroli yeah it i is. don't like the nose the I mean, trail the, the moment you spray this you can smell in the air right it's a must try yeah yeah see it's clever clever yeah so this one i'm sure i'm sure that i'm the, only, the first person to ever say that ever Probably, Sorry, you should hashtag that one too. H hag attack that. Stop it. Hag attack that. <laughs> Some of you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, these surprise boxes. I like it. I like to hashtag it Clark to you. It's not official, but I like to hashtag it that. Yeah. Oh, okay. So Probably, Sorry, you should hashtag that one too. H hag attack that. Stop it. Hag attack that. <laughs> Some of you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but yeah, I, I absolutely love it like you, you said. I put a stupid dent in this. You can't even see it. It's probably. not even a dent. There's a dent left. There, yeah. There's, there's a dent left. There's maybe two mils of this left. Probably. Like in a card analogy, you know, like a card has a dent in it. This is a card that has dent all around it, and it just has one spot that doesn't have a dent. Yeah, that's pretty much what it is. It needs to be taken to the shop, but I ain't gonna do it. So this must is probably uh, synthetic as well. Yeah, it's okay. um, it, it is, but there's I think all the the notes that's going within this perfume is what's creating that very powdery animalic musk very animalic right um, it's, it's a very animalic the like i said the the neroli i, I don't really get the bergamot too much in this maybe mm -hmm. off maybe no, no, no. off first spray it is that freshness that very bright the, the freshness. orange blossom too i don't get it that much at all but the <laughs> neroli and the rose you get and i not the I like it as a whole, but the rose I kind of I don't like rose personally, so I'm not liking it that's in there. But I get it. You know, it's easier to pick up something you don't like, right? Because you know that you don't like it or whatever. And I think the rose, the rose is what's um, playing a part of that powderness too. Right? Did you get the tonka bean. Yeah, the yeah tonka bean, which patchouli. gives out a little bit of sweetness, the patchouli, the dark, the darkness, more earthiness. Can give off that um, forest kind of vibe, green vibe. So this has a lot going on. It has oh, your freshness, it has your green, your powder, and your a lot floral. of animalic dirtiness going exactly. on. Exactly. So this one is classified as a floral woody musk. So it definitely shows it. I'm sure people are kind of sick of hearing the name zoologist perfume from me by now. But it's a musk perfume. So just to compare it really quick, this is kind of a not like okay, if I had to put it in words. It's more a little bit dirty, musk. Not just a musk, but the, as a scent overall. overall. Yeah. And something like musk here, our Tom Ford Jasmine musk, is a very clean, powdery, like very, yeah, feel, very feel good, a little like soapy, calm. You just yes. relax. And this is, you can still say it's bright, infused. Like the other ones I said are bright, but don't have the dark tone, not that much. Where this is, there's a bright on top, and the the, the bottom is all filled up with very dark, heavy. Animalic um, darkness. Darkness yeah. is the word that, that I can only come up with. And what it, what I find is really cool about this fragrance, and I feel this probably, anybody that's come across this may have uh, just passed it up, dismissed it, thinking, oh, it's probably a summer fragrance or a spring fragrance or whatever. Just, it, but by looking at the notes, when okay. you look at the, when oh, you, the notes, that's okay. what I mean. Like when you look at the notes, it can, it can trick you. You may think that oh I'm gonna this is gonna be a good spring scent, which you can wear it in spring. Or you might think, oh, it can transfer right into summer. Because you're looking at the notes, the neroli, the bergamot, the you know what I mean? There's like, more numbers of bright uh, notes in there, but the, the overall there's more of the dark, the, it's much more infused in there than the brighter ones. Exactly. Ones. It's, it's how it's how it's how it's um done and how yeah. it's blended. It just gives off that it's this is a winter frag, guys. It's not summer. I can't believe there's no wood in it. It almost gives a woodsy vibe, right? Well the yeah, like the patchouli and those and so forth gives off that woodsy okay. vibe um from that. So that's where that kind of comes from, right? But it's it's a, it's a it's a lovely fragrance. I need to restock on this again soon. They're actually so, um price point is not it's it's very not cheap, but it's, it's, it's good. It's oh, good. It, it's it is a cheapie. Yeah, well, it is okay. It's nice. a cheapie. It, it retail for this in stores. I believe it's 59 bucks. 
And at times, um, Kios will do their promos. 20% off. 20, 20, 25% off, 30% off, things like that. You can honestly get this with tax sometimes for like 52 bucks or whatever it is. So it's a beautiful scent that is well respected in the community and especially for musk lovers. Anybody that loves musk loves it. I know you brought it too, but I've seen it in a lot of the meetups. Yeah. A lot of the meetups. Yeah. Uh, is it niche? It's niche, right? It's. I would consider it niche because it is a cosmetic. Personally, niche and designer, and I'm sure we probably talked about this last time too, um, is a very fine line. Some people categorize certain things like Guerlain, for example, as designer. It's not. Cartier, for example, it's not designer. Personally, it is niche to me. They don't do clothing, they don't do leather goods, they don't do none of that stuff. They're watchmakers, cosmetic companies, these are niche brands, but they're just more readily available that they're considered designer. Good point. Right? Good point. Good point. <laughs> but at the same time, how people categorize designer and niche is all, all different. Like it some is. people, it's just, it's it just rare. Some people, it's these you can find at the mall. Exactly. And these you can find at the mall. And you had an even better point. Oh, these guys actually don't do clothing and this and this and this. And this. Like, yeah. I get what you're saying. Everybody has their own um, thing, right? What niche and what designer is. Whatever. To me, that's what I. That's how I. Oh, well, you're somebody who's been in the game for a longer time than the average, so I like to think so. 